Hello, everyone, and welcome to my CHN podcast, Health Conversations Without Barriers. This is Mariela, and today I am going solo. Um, I actually have a very special guest, Miriam Guzman, and she is our outreach coordinator. Thank you for being here, Miriam. Hey, thank you for having me. Yes. So I, uh, as Mariela said, I am Miriam Guzman with uh, Community Health Network as well. I work for the company and I'm um, an outreach coordinator. And I am so excited about this because now we're launching National Health Center Week. It's around the corner um, and get a little bit more information on what it is, right? Yeah. So actually I was going to ask. So we work for a health center, but could you tell the listeners what is National Health Center Week? Yes. So um, National Health Center Week is an opportunity to highlight the commitment and passion of our community health centers, Um, staff, board members, and supporters who make it possible to provide quality, comprehensive health care services to more than 30 million patients across 14,500 communities annually. Um, There's a theme. The theme this year is the Roadmap of Stronger America. Um, This year is going to be August the 6th to the 12th. um, And I can't wait to explain a little bit more in detail because each day has seven focus areas. We have seven focus focus areas, so each day has its own focus. These areas are public health and housing, health care for people who have experienced homelessness, agricultural worker day, patient appreciation, stakeholder appreciation, health center staff appreciation, and child health. It's a composition of everything, um, what we do on a daily basis, who we serve, and our process um, that we do here at the health centers. If you guys are patients of my CHN, you guys know that we do more than just seeing a patient. We actually take care of the community. So National Health Center Week is just kind of showing what, as Miriam said, all the aspects that we touch, all the lives that we touch, all of the little sectors of healthcare that we have our hands on. Um, and then we're going to start with the first day, which is public health housing. So yes, could you so tell me a little year, bit more about that? Yes, of course. Um, so this year's is, um, let me just, let me go back a little bit more. So that way I can definitely tell you a little bit more about National Health Center Week. So this year's um, theme is going to be the roadmap to, strong, to a stronger America and its community health centers serve as a beacon of strength, service and care in our communities in the moment of pain, loss and offer support and love. In moments of trying, we offer hope and vision for our future. This year's National Health Center Week theme takes us to a virtual road trip across America. So um we did say it's national. You're going to see different things, um, different um, health centers doing the same things, highlighting them. And then that's going to get me right into uh, day one. So day night is public health and housing. Um, and, and we can talk a little bit more about uh, health public health and housing. Um, I know one of your questions, Mariela, we were talking about it earlier. You said, what is the PHCP program? Um, What is it? It is some community health centers receive a grant to support the federal public housing primary care program, a special population uh, designation. The mission of the PHPC program is to provide requirements of public housing with which increase the access of comprehensive primary health care and disease prevention services. In 2021, more than 5.7 billion community health centers patients were served as a location in or immediately accessible to a public house site. Um, so let's talk a little bit more about that, right, Mariela? Um, we don't directly put you into a place for public housing. Public housing um, is, we we like to say is for somebody, you know, to get back on their feet and is struggling or, or parents that have lost their jobs or not able to play. So there is places that will go based off of income. We'll do all of that. We don't necessarily have the funds to put you in a home, put you in your family, but we do have those organizations. As a community, we do collaborate with different organizations that do help with that. So what we do is we contact the other other organizations um, uh, along with United Way. So United Way is a great, great, great um, uh, collaborative 
um, organization that we do. So they do so much for the community and we actually partner up with them to put them in a platform where we're able to, to bridge those gaps. So for those that need rental assistance, we can help with that. We can submit them through uh, United Way, give that referral, and then we follow up with that. Um, so we actually have in our clinics, those that follow up. So we don't, the care, our care coordinators to follow up through everything. We don't want it to fall through the cracks. Um, so that's what we do. And um, we do a lot of that through through our health center. So anybody that comes in through our, our health centers for their first eligibility appointment, we screen them. What else can we help you with? You know, in public health, uh, public uh, health and housing is an important thing because we've said it and it's on our website. I was, you know, I was scrolling through our website earlier and we want to bridge those gaps because sometimes it's easier. It's as parents, as, as family members, we rather put food on the table than go to the doctor, right? But we we got to maintain. So we, we do like to do a whole person care in public health um, health and housing and being able to have those um, resources is very important for us. Um, actually, I've gotten this question before. So what would you say to someone that is asking, what does housing has to do with health care? Oh, well, of course. I mean, it's uh, to us, it's very important. Maybe you don't have a home to live in. You don't have, you know, right now with the high heat, you you can get dehydrated. You can get, you know, um, housing also too, you know, a place to stay at night, uh, a bed to stay at night. It, it affects your health. You don't have those means to be able to keep a healthy lifestyle if you're living in the street. Um, so it is very, very important. Yeah, it definitely... Um... I think even like with COVID, like a lot of people saw how if one aspect of your life of your life is kind of like not stable is how it's going to tumble down onto the next sections of your life. Yeah, it's a so, trickling effect. If one thing's not right, it's going to keep on going. And I think that's what we do as, as my CHN is make sure we tackle every aspect of that to make sure we take care of the whole person. Because every little thing, you know, um, you, you brought it back to, to COVID. Um, a lot of families didn't have, you know, they, they didn't work. Mm -hmm. the, the head of the household was laid off because of COVID. Uh, well, now you're not able to pay your bills. Now you're going into mental health. Your mental health is not there. Um, so it's an all overall and and overall health because now you're you're wondering and how can I survive in this? What can I do? And we want to make sure that we alleviate a little bit of those those problems. Uh one thing that I know we're doing at my CHN is we're coming out with Brasco. So it's gonna be a social determinants of health website where everyone in the community with Ambrosoria County will be able to use it to know. For example, what resources an organization is able to provide to their customer, patient, or member. And that is going to help put in these types of resources. Yes, I think that's really important. Something that we, and then too, they can track it. I think that's one of our major things. And I keep saying it. Um, sometimes, you know, we've had those platforms or we've had those referrals, but how can we track it? How can we make sure that our patients are getting the care that they need or the resources that they need? Um, I know in the past, um, when you are, no, not even in the past, if now, like you want to refer somebody or you want to send somebody to, to, to see the doc, okay, let me, let me get, this example, um, we work with schools. Sometimes uh, teachers, counselors, they see they see that the kids need some sort of resources, dental assistance, uh, and they give our information out. But do they come and see us? Do they do they take that step to see us? So I think that platform is very important because teachers can use it to refer out their students, and we contact them to make sure that they don't fall in. They get the care that they need. So yes, very important. I'm glad you brought it up, um, and I think it's something that can be good. And this concludes our first take of public health housing. And then stay tuned for day two, which is going to be healthcare for people experiencing homelessness. Thank you for joining.